Hi, this is Charles. How are you doing? Uh, today, as expected, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, I can never say his name, uh, announced a series of measures to, to boost the economy, to kickstart the, the property market and the hospitality and, and holiday sector, uh, which I'll go through in a bit more detail. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the Chancellor is, maybe you're, you're listening from abroad, another country, the Chancellor of the Exchequer is basically the guy who's in control of the money uh, or the, the Treasury. He's considered the, most, uh, the second most powerful man in government, well maybe third after Dominic Cummings <laughs> and Boris Johnson. Now that was a joke. Uh, so he, he's in control of the purse strings and he's, he's seen as, has done a pretty good job with the job furlough scheme which now includes nine million people, nine million people. So he's bringing in a scheme to uh, enable employers to, to bring those people back into work and he'll pay them a thousand pound bonus per employee. I'm not sure um, if, if that's enough, but it, 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 you know, if, you just, if every employer took advantage of that, that would be a nine uh, billion pound spend. Now, the worry is from the labor benches is that companies that were going to bring their employees back anyway will obviously claim that that bonus why wouldn't they you know if you're tesco's and you've got you know hundreds uh, fifty thousand people on furlough um uh, you know that's a lot of money you can get by by just uh, claiming that that bonus so there is a few there are a few questions there as, as to, to to whether that scheme is is uh, wise uh, but it but it is something rather than nothing uh, the, the big one was the the, the stamp duty holiday for six months, uh, raising the threshold from 250 to 500,000. Uh, my my little rant on stamp duty is that it is an obscene tax. It's it's an obscene tax to, to tax people who've saved hard and scrimped and saved, as I did when I first my, first bought my property. I, I scrimped and saved to buy it. Uh, in those days, I think the stamp duty might have been one percent across the board. Now, since uh, the old uh, George Osborne, the, the Chancellor with six jobs and loads of money abroad, he brought in this, this new stamp duty tax, raised it, and, and it's crippling for some young couples. Uh, and yet they're, they're the ones who are saving to buy a property and, and, and deal with uh, their, their own housing, and, and they're not dependent on the state or anybody else. And they're the ones who are penalised, and yet other people who probably don't even contribute anything in tax or very little in tax are given all the, the benefits and social housing uh, so I think you're, you're penalizing the wrong people you should be encouraging people to, to save and get into a property rather than taxing them with this stamp duty yes they're reducing it for six months but then it goes back to the old rate you know we know that in London and the southeast you, you, you can't even get a house for less than around half a million in some areas you can't even get a, a studio flat for that uh, so it, it's not going to help those people in, in London and the South East. And I'm not talking about central London, like, like this part of central London, like, you know, the, the West End. I'm talking about uh, just the London districts around the M25, you know, the, the Watfords and uh, the, the, the Ilfords and, uh, you know, just places that are normal suburban areas, uh, Harrow and, and these sort of places. You're not going to get properties uh, for, for a family for, for less than half a million. So they're still going to pay some tax, but it is reduced for uh, a certain period of time. So that's good. He's announced an unusual scheme for uh, people in, in the hospitality sector. I think it's called the uh, Eat eat to, to, to Help or Help to Eat. Uh, basically, it's a discount voucher scheme for participating restaurants where in the month of August, if you go out to eat in those restaurants, you'll get a 50% discount up to £10 per head. And that, that, that I'm sure would be a welcome scheme for, for, the, for that sector. He's also announced a, a, a cut in VAT from 20 to 5% for a limited period for, again, for the, the hospitality sector. So that, that would include um, anything that you would pay VAT on in, in the hospitality sector. Uh, it could include uh, the cost of rides and uh, attractions as well. So hopefully that will get things moving a little bit. Um, I think a longer and more a wider VAT cut would have helped to get more people spending again. But, but there you go. At least they're, they're doing something. Uh, so, so those were the, the, the main thrust of the uh, of the measures. Uh, it, it and 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 together with the the changes coming up for planning, it hopefully will get the property market moving. I think he said that the the, 
just the, the building sector alone is, is uh, accounts for 750,000 jobs, and that doesn't include all the ancillary jobs that go with buying and selling a house. You know, all the solicitors, the clerks, the estate agents, the you know the, the suppliers of materials and that sort of thing. And we've already seen one big material supplier cutting back and closing down branches. Uh, so I think what he's trying to do is stave off what the IMF say is the, the worst economic uh, catastrophe in, in, since records began. Uh, he said that the economy had slipped in the first quarter by 25%, which is equivalent, I, I didn't know this, 25% drop in growth of GDP is equivalent to the previous 18 years of growth. So all that growth is just wiped out in a quarter. Uh, so uh, they're doing what they can. Obviously the economy's been in lockdown and some people will make comments like, well, what do you think we're in lockdown? Or what do you think, I suppose? Yeah, but we're still reporting the facts here. Um, so hopefully uh, the economy will be opened up a bit more and we can get people back to work properly rather than supporting them with these expensive furlough schemes. And the government support package is, is going to run, run up to around 300 billion over the, the whole year. And that's got to be paid for, because uh, these are borrowing, this is borrowing. The government borrows more than it earns, so this is borrowing, and that's going to have to be paid back over many, many years, maybe 50 years, or by higher taxes. Uh, so, uh, and, and just remember on borrowing, by the way, we, we're not quite out of the woods from the last recession, the 2008, they called it the Great Recession. We still owe money from that recession, we're still in the deficit. We're still in a position where every year the government spends more than it earns. So the government is living on this uh, massive credit card, if you like, spending more than it earns every year. It's a bit like you uh, spending more than you earn on, on your credit cards or keep, you keep remortgaging your house and spending that money. Uh, well, the, but the government does that and it can do that because it prints the money, of course. Uh, but eventually, if you keep doing that, the money becomes so devalued and you, you know, inflation runs rampant as it has in socialist countries like Venezuela, uh, Argentina years ago, and of course Germany in the, in the, the 1920s. And oh, I think we lost the connection there, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you can't just keep printing money and hoping, hoping for the best. Uh, eventually it catches up with you. And the value of the, the pound in your pocket also, or the dollar, will go down in value by virtue of the fact that they're just printing more money. So in the long run, you, if you're investing, you don't want to be on deposit accounts and in cash because the rates are so low anyway, plus the fact that your money has been devalued over time. In other words, you know, in 10 years' time, that same m amount of money will buy less than it does today. So you need to be in assets, you need to be in assets like property, like shares, or something that will, will actually appreciate in value over time. And uh, you know, if you want to know more about getting into property, there is a, a webinar tomorrow, a free webinar, and I'll put details on this page and have a look at that. It's not, I'm not running it, it's somebody else, uh, but do have a look at that because they're talking about how to buy, refurbish, and refinance property. That means you buy a property, you refurbish it, you, you do some work to it to improve the value, and then you, you refinance it at the end to get all or most of your money out, and then you can move on to the next project. It's a brilliant way of of uh, investing because unlike most ordinary buy-to-let investors who just put all their money into one property and then buy, maybe buy another one with all the deposits and stamp dues and then they run out of funds and that's it, they, they're stuck. Uh, and and the, the property that they bought hasn't gone up in value enough to refinance it. Whereas if you buy a property and you can improve it with refurbishment and then you can refinance it, perhaps on a different basis even, perhaps you can get a commercial refinance out and get even more money than you thought. There are ways of doing these things and they're going to be talking about that tomorrow uh, evening. Uh, have a look at the, the link here and it's a free webinar. You can join it from anywhere in the world. Have a look and I, I will speak to you again soon. So on the day here that I'm in London here, that Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, has announced various measures to kickstart the economy. Uh, hopefully we'll get back to normal, but I, I, I still don't think we're completely out of the woods. Thanks very much. Bye for now.